Okay, we need to talk about critical thinking here for a second. Critical thinking, I think, actually falls under the umbrella of um, philosophy in higher education a lot of times, but we do so much critical thinking here in sociology that I want to cover the five general standards of critical thinking. So this is actually coming from a fellow instructor, a professor at Santiago Keenan College. I don't know if you've ever taken a class with Professor Marcelo Pimentel, but totally one of the top five best teachers I've ever had. Now, it's challenging. I might have cried on the first day, but, but it's like, it's, it's a transformational class. It challenges you and teaches you so much. And he is just, um, I can't say enough things about his enthusiasm and his kindness. Like, he's just, he's a great guy. He also wrote his own textbook. And this is coming from Professor Pimentel's textbook, The Five General Standards of Critical Thinking. And we're going to use them throughout the semester. So the first one is to be clear. We, a lot of times, are incredibly vague in the ways that we discuss things or write a lot of times. It's kind of like, I read a lot of student assignments that have words, but they kind of don't say much of anything. Like, you kind of sit there going, okay, what, what's your point? So thinking about clarity, how can we be clear communicators? How can we make sure that we check for clarity with others to make sure that we're being understood or that we understand them? A lot of times this happens in, um, in relation to relationships. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen a couple like celebrate and share like an anniversary on social media. A lot of times they're like, oh my gosh, I love my partner so much. Hasn't always been easy. Or, oh my gosh, I love my partner so much. We've had our ups and downs. It's like, what does that mean? Or like relationship advice. Well, you just need to compromise. Well, how? So that idea of like a lot of times, one of the other examples I'll give you is uh, if I get to have a conversation with students about the best ways that they can kind of help themselves learn. And they're like, don't procrastinate. I'm like, cool. What does that mean? Because we can just throw, I mean, you know what procrastinate means, right? It means not getting your work done. But to say don't procrastinate, like, what are the steps that you actually need to take to not procrastinate? That's what I mean by clarity. Like, catching yourself and going, wait a second, where do I need to be clear? With myself or with others, right? So the next one is actually, this word is in the title of your lecture and chapter notes. The idea of reflectiveness, being reflective. Is thinking about why you think what you think, which is very Dr. Seuss-like, right? Have you ever thought about why you think what you think? Like, but seriously, have you? Have you ever stopped to go, wait a second, why do I respond that way? Where did I get this information? How did this get shaped in my mind? Why do I think what I think? Why does this matter to me? Why is it important to me? So being reflective is a critical thinking exercise. Thinking about why you think what you think. Next is fairness. And holy moly, does that come up all the time in sociology? Society in so many ways is inherently unfair. So to look for fairness, to analyze fairness, to try to create fairness for others can be such an important part of being a member of society. And so really kind of keeping that lens of deciding, thinking, contemplating, examining what is fair can be so, so important to our thinking process. The next one is being systematic, and that means being an organized thinker, um, or in some cases, an organized writer. So making sure that what you're saying flows, you know, A, B, C, kind of keeping things in an organized manner as you think through it or you express yourself. Um, if you were to see an image, you know, that kind of illustrates this, which I probably should have had in the PowerPoint, but like think of a brain, like an image of a brain, like a, just a drawing of somebody's head. And like the inside of their head is just all squiggly lines in every single direction. And it just looks like, looks like a pile of spaghetti, like a massive, you know, just noodles in your brain. If you were to then think about being systematic, it would be like having a chart or a perfect circle that, you know, continues on into like a spiral. Like it would be perfectly straight lines, like that idea of organization and making sure our thoughts are organized. Then the last one, you've seen it, be logical. I think, well, first of all, logical means to be um, 
objective, right? To step outside of yourself, to not be subjective. It's about taking emotion out of like our responses as we analyze. I kind of think that there's some value in both being logical, absolutely, but also kind of being an emotional thinker, being invested in our exploration of topics, having it mean something to us. Um, But definitely, if we only focused on our emotions, we certainly wouldn't get an opportunity to be a person who's critically analyzing our lives and society. So, So clarity, reflectiveness, fairness, systematic, and being logical. Please kind of tuck those in the back of your head and continue to make them a goal throughout the semester.